jobs and still quitting. We've got the latest numbers. And did you catch any of that football over the weekend? Insane games and huge viewership. We've got a full NFL recap. And finally, we saw some rain here across the area, and that will continue to slide off to the east tonight. Maybe some fog in the morning and staying cool this week. Your 25 News starts right now. Connecting Central Texas, this is 25 News. You know, teachers, and you, you, you figure out what, what's going on in their family lives, what's going on at home, how they're dealing with this. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll break your heart a lot of the time to figure out what uh, teachers are doing to, to manage this year. Some stunning new figures out. Half of first year teachers in Texas are calling it quits. That's according to a new study from the University of Houston. That's forcing school districts across central Texas to get creative with incentives to keep them here. But is it enough? Our Nakia Simon explains. The retention rate for first year teachers dropped nearly in half since 2010 in Texas. School districts across central Texas are working to combat that. And so what we try to do is to focus on helping our first year teachers with classroom management, which is a struggle for all first year teachers. Educators say other challenges like low pay wages, high stress and challenging work conditions are causing them to leave. So newer teachers actually didn't have any anything else to compare these years to. They they don't know any different and not that it was, you know, a ton easier before, but um, it's, man, it's different. It's a different world now. And um, so they all, they only knew this, this immense struggle. School districts are pushing new incentives to keep them on the job, like Waco ISD's new retention bonus that will begin this year. Teachers can receive up to $10,000 that will be paid in three installments. We have that program beginning and the first installment that's going to be paid out to our teachers will be in December of 2022. Colleen ISD maintain its ranks as the highest paying school district in our region. First year teachers have the ability to make $55,000, $57,000 with zero years of experience. And if they have experience and they join us from another district, there's an ability to make even more money on top of that. But for some, more pay isn't cutting it. It's going to take more than incentives to keep teachers in classrooms. I feel like the profession as a whole has been generally kind of disregarded and, and generally disrespected for a long time. Um, the autonomy of teachers has been completely stripped. To see the full report on education in Texas, head to our website at kxxv.com. Reporting in Waco, Nakia Simon, 25 News. Nakia, thank you. Now, the stress of the pandemic isn't just taking its toll on teachers. Last year, the Texas legislature passed House Bill 4545 to help curb learning loss due to COVID-19. The bill requires schools to offer students 30 hours of targeted instruction based on how many subjects students failed on the STAR test. Tutoring sessions are held with the students, but the current teacher shortages are making that very, very difficult. And a study back in December found that children are expected to lose a lot of money later in life. The UN looked at the effects of disruptions in schooling and they found that children are learning fewer skills. They think it'll eventually lead to children missing out on about $17 trillion in earnings over their lifetime. Authors of the report say there's still time to act, but countries need to prioritize education right now. A report from Governor Greg Abbott says new job creation here in the state is at an all-time high. But if you go to your local store or restaurant, you're likely to find a very short-handed workforce. 25 News reporter Austin Walker is here in the studio trying to find that disconnect. Over 50,000 jobs were added just in December across the state, but help wanted and now hiring signs have become permanent decoration on storefronts as well. One business owner telling me today it's just a lot to juggle. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Well, if you blink, one of the servers like, Miss Mary Lee, let me check it in for you. I'm like, man, you'll probably miss her. Uh, back of the house kitchen. Excuse me one second. Okay. Thank you. Mary Lou Castillo, owner of Casa de Castillo, simply does it all. I'm going to host, bus, and wash dishes all in the same thing. She does it because she loves it, but she also does it because at this point, she has to. Am I going to say I have the best staff in the United States of America? Absolutely. But I'm going to say, could I use two, three, four more? Sure thing. As Castillo searches to staff her shifts. I need a few more people for that. The Texas job market is continuing to expand. In a report by the Texas Workforce Commission, just in this past December, under the Abbott administration, the state has added over 50,000 more jobs. The unemployment rate dropping from 5.2% to 5%. 
leaving Castillo and other business owners with questions, why can't they get people into work? James West, a professor of economics at Baylor, says the Texas economy is growing fast, but these help wanted signs aren't going anywhere. He says pay is a big factor. The businesses who are willing to pay higher wages are the ones that attract the workers. Pushing Castillo to make some changes. We're having to increase their pay, so the staff coming in, we're hopefully trying to get a competitive rate. As shifts stay open and consumers continue to flood in. How are you today? Good to she'll continue to do it all, but a little more help would go a long way. From that report, January is also looking good. The unemployment rate has also expected to go down, and those numbers will be coming out in March. Castillo also asks everyone to have patience when you go anywhere because most likely they're short-staffed. In the studio tonight, I'm Austin Walker, 25 News. Austin, thank you. Now let's get a first check of our weather. Chief Meteorologist Matt Hines here. Matt, a lot of those showers moving out now. They are, and it was nice to get a little umbrella weather around here as we do need some of the moisture across our region, and I do think we're going to be seeing this really start to push out here over the next couple of hours or so. Just lingering showers from around Corsicana back to near Mejia on 84 there, and then as you head farther to the south, scattering of showers from Centerville down to Madisonville, pushing out of Robertson County, though, in fall. And there's on the backside a little bit of shower activity moving in from the northwest around Meridian. That should head high down Highway 6. We may see that approach the Waco area and points to the north over the next hour or so. But the line share of the rain is done. Now it's drizzle and a little bit of fog from time to time. In fact, it has cleared out a little bit on our extra coat Eagle Eye in Copperas Cove. So we are seeing a little bit of clearing across our western counties and temperatures are falling into the 40s where we're seeing that. 48 degrees in Gatesville, 49 in Clean and 47 in Lampasas. Hold on to 50 in Waco and 50 in Marlin. Then you take a look at the visibilities. Still pretty good right now. Lowest visibilities across the eastern half of the area. But as we clear out a little bit with the moisture we had today, that's going to cause the lowest levels of the atmosphere to saturate and fog will be developing later this evening into tomorrow morning. Uh, the latest on that coming up. All right, Matt, thank you. The Texas Health Department says seniors make up nearly 13% of Texas's population right now, and that's only expected to grow in the coming decades. The city of Belton is taking note. 25 News reporter Christina Davis explains how they're now protecting seniors with a simple phone call. No one likes asking for help, but for our independent seniors, Belton PD says the simple act of calling and checking on someone can be the difference between life and death. A lady that um, was also living by herself uh, was found deceased in her home. And uh, Chief Ellis said that he did not want anything like that to ever happen in the city of Belton and that we should start a program that would check on the seniors. The police department says seniors are some of the city's greatest treasures worth protecting. I mean, there's such a vulnerable population. And to me, I feel like Belton is rich in elderly people. We want to protect that community as much as possible. A report by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says roughly 28% of older adults live alone with many seniors in the program looking forward to their call from volunteers. I have a few friends that have it and they really like it. And they are they look forward to them calling them. A simple call can put a smile on a senior's face. A simple call can save their life. You probably heard the saying it's a blessing to be a blessing. The Are You OK program has saved the lives of 13 seniors so far. If you or your loved one is interested, head on over to the Belton Police Department and grab an application or go online to their website. In Belton, Christina Davis, 25 News. All right, Christina, the head of the World Health Organization says we're not at the end game of the pandemic yet. The director general says it is dangerous to believe Omicron will be the last dangerous variant. Instead, he says global conditions are actually ideal for more variants to emerge. He says it's vital the world work together to bring the acute phase of the pandemic to an end. The restaurant industry continuing, continuing to feel the impact. The National Restaurant Association says 88% of restaurants experienced a decline in demand in recent weeks. 76% of operators are seeing a decline in business, even worse than just a few months ago. Many restaurants are still trying to recoup losses from the last two years. 
For 50 years, a Waco woman has been serving up smiles alongside the food that she provides for hospital patients. Up next, the positively Central Texas story of Laura Carr as she celebrates half a century on the job. One Waco woman hit a career milestone this week that's out of reach for most of us. She is celebrating 50 years working at a local hospital. 25 News reporter Alicia Nespreto introduces us to Laura Carr. Laura Carr began working at a hospital cafeteria in 1971. Now 50 years later, her co-workers are celebrating her special anniversary. I like the job. I like taking care of the doctors. And that's what I do. I call them my babies, so they need pampering and a little TLC. For 50 years, rain or shine, she's been there nearly every single day with a smile, ready to take care of anyone who stops by the cafeteria. Over five decades, Carr only called out for one of her shifts just once in the thousands that she's worked over the years. If I just have a headache, I'm not calling in just for a headache. Um, I have to be really, really sick. To call in and she says a strong work ethic, something she was raised with, got her to the 50-year mark. Now she's trying to pass that on to future generations. Only thing I can say is get on your job, do your job, do your part. You pull your load and work as a team. And most of all, pray, because there's sometimes you're going to have to have prayer. So. But anyway, just and just be faithful and, and uh, be a team player. She also stressed the importance of being a good communicator and talking out issues with your coworkers. In Waco, Alicia Nespreto, 25 News. Good advice there. All right, let's go ahead and circle back in with Matt. And we are looking at a pretty nice evening across the area as the rain is now starting to push off to the east. And the rest of the week's really not going to be too bad out there. It is going to be cool, though. I think highs will be in the 50s Tuesday through Friday. But things will change as we head toward the weekend. Could be a couple showers late in the week and just a couple at best right now. And then a mild weekend on the way with temperatures in the 60s, maybe even getting close to 70 by Sunday. So we do have something to look forward to on the weekend as we should see plenty of sunshine the way it looks right now. But we did have some showers earlier today. Currently, we do have a few showers from Meridian back toward Hamilton and also across our eastern areas going back about four hours or so. You can see those showers made their way from the I-35 corridor off to the east and now really starting to push east of I-45. And again, on the back edge here, maybe a couple little showers getting down the Highway 84 corridor from Gatesville to Waco and points to the north and east as this starts to pull out of the area for the remainder of this evening. Our extra co eagle eye in Waco still showing some clouds out there and a little mist from time to time. Those cloudy skies and 50 degrees, so it is quite cool. Look at the dew point 49. So we have about 97 and 98 percent humidity right now. Doesn't take much and we're probably going to see some fog develop a little later on with south southwest winds pretty light at six miles per hour. So let's see how this is all going to play out. Showers pushing off to the east, then the clouds starting to develop once again as we head into the morning hours. And then as we move into Wednesday, it does appear we're going to see some of those clouds across our region as well. I don't think we're going to see much in the way of rain by the middle part of the week. I think any of that's going to stay to the north and west. And in fact, that could be snow across West Texas and into the panhandle, but I don't think that'll be for us. What we will see for tonight, though, is some fog across the area. And by about midnight or so, there'll be patchy, dense fog, especially Temple down through Marlin, down to Cameron. We could see those visibilities getting down to less than a mile. And then I think a lot of us join in on that as we make our way into 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, especially close to the I-35 corridor, quarter to half mile visibility, looking like a pretty good bet as of right now. And then that burns off as we make our way into tomorrow afternoon with sunshine expected. So again, for the morning hours, maybe a little fog for you as you head out toward work and school. So tonight, temperatures will be into the 30s and 40s. We have cleared out a little bit across our western areas. So this is where the coolest conditions will be into the 30s and some 40s along and east of I-35. Then tomorrow, highs into the 50s. 60 is our normal high. 
83-19-71 is the record high. Nowhere near that, and I don't think we're going to see any record highs anytime soon around here. We had plenty of those in the month of December. And look at the 50s, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, on into Friday. And again, a few isolated showers will be possible by the end of the week. We head into the weekend. There's your treat. Saturday and Sunday, highs going up through the 60s, maybe even getting close to 70 by Sunday. And we'll keep it on the milder side as we move into next week as well. Maybe a couple shower and thunderstorm chances to go along with it. All right, Matt, thank you. Starting today, remember the Washington Avenue Bridge is down in downtown Waco will close for about eight weeks. Crews are making improvements to the sewer system on the west side of the river. The pedestrian walkway will remain open, but traffic will be diverted. A man has been charged with murder after police say he shot and killed a father outside of Chuck E. Cheese's outside of Houston. Two days later, the 27-year-old suspect, Antonio Badon, allegedly shot another man and shot towards another outside of a grocery store. Three days after that, documents say he assaulted a family member and was finally arrested. Tonight, he's in the Harris County Jail facing a slew of charges. The greatest week of football of all time. That's what some are saying about this weekend's NFL playoff games. It was a doozy after the break. We'll recap it all along with the growing speculation around two of the greatest quarterbacks to recently play the game. If you are a football fan, there's a pretty good chance you haven't quite seen a weekend of NFL football like we saw on Saturday and Sunday. It's already being called one of the greatest weekends of playoff football ever. Now there's speculation regarding two of the NFL's biggest stars. For the win! He caught it! The Buffalo Bills and Kansas City Chiefs trading touchdown after touchdown. Neither team ever leading by more than seven. In the final two minutes, the teams combining to score 25 points, the lead changing three times. A 48-yard field goal sending the game to overtime, the Chiefs winning the coin toss, and then Patrick Mahomes winning them the game. Ball game! Chiefs! The young quarterback securing his fourth AFC Championship game appearance. But this weekend, two of football's biggest and oldest stars crashed out of Super Bowl contention. On Saturday, the San Francisco 49ers sent Aaron Rodgers packing as they defeated the Green Bay Packers in a defensive showdown. Picked up and a touchdown! With snow pouring down, the underdog Niners sealed the win with this last second field goal. And good! 49ers win it! 38-year-old Rodgers addressing questions about whether he'll play another season. You know, I'm going to take some time, take some time away and make a decision. And the other big story, Tom Brady and the defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers coming up short against the L.A. Rams. The Bucs down early, trailing by 21 in the third quarter, but then Tom Brady did what he does best. She makes the catch, he's in for the score! The game looked poised for another classic Brady comeback, but the Rams kicker sending the ball through the uprights as time expired. Boots it! After the game, the 44-year-old Brady dodging the question on everyone's mind. Whether you'll come back or not. I haven't put a lot of thought into it, so you know, we'll just take it day by day and see, kind of see where we're at. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. Tonight, the IRS is starting to receive its first tax returns. But tax season this year is more confusing than normal. Coming up, we've got all the information you need to know before filing. If you think you're seeing some emptier shelves than usual at the market, you would be right. Earlier this month, in-stock food levels hit their lowest point since June 2020. The biggest shortfall is in refrigerated dough, but there's also reduced stockage of candy and baking supplies. Overall, more than 85% of household staples are in stock at most retailers, down from about a typical 90%. The Red Cross and Krispy Kreme teaming up. And they are hoping that free donuts will convince more people to donate blood. This week, anyone who donates blood and shows a sticker at Krispy Kreme will get a dozen free donuts. The company says it's a way of saying thanks to blood donors at a time of urgent need. There's been a 10% drop in blood donations since the beginning of the pandemic. You can now file your taxes, but the IRS warns it might be a while before you get your refund. The agency is dealing with a staffing shortage and backlog from tax filings last year. If you want to get your refund faster, the IRS recommends filing online and signing up for direct deposit. Also, make sure your return is accurate and matches all IRS records. 
Tax season can be stressful for a lot of people, so Prosperity Tax Service here in Waco wants to make things as easy as possible. They say some of the most common mistakes in filing or filling out your taxes are misspellings of names, numbers, social security numbers. Even some people forget to mention a second or third job on their form. But the number one thing that all taxpayers should do in the upcoming months, simply visit the IRS website and make an account. Create your own account and password and all those things so you're able to see all of the documentation uh, that goes along with your tax return. And many people during the pandemic use stock and investment applications like Robinhood and Stash. And you don't want to forget about that while following your taxes as well. And if you're a parent, keep an eye out for IRS Form 6419. It's all about the Advanced Child Tax Credit, which was paid out from July through December. Some families received up to $300 for each kid 5 and up and $250 for kids 6 to 17. Form 6419 will help parents accurately report the amount of money they got up front in 2021. This week we are celebrating National News Literacy Week. Coming up tonight, we take an in-depth look at misinformation and the human cost it can lead to. Here's a look at the top stories from the six o'clock half hour tonight. A shocking new study released by the University of Houston shows that half of first year teachers in Texas are calling it quits. Educators say challenges like low wages and high stress are big reasons. School districts are pushing new incentives to try and keep retention rates up, but it's still unclear if that'll help here in Central Texas. And Belton Police say its Are You OK program is working to keep their seniors safe. In fact, it has helped save 13 people since first launching. The police department says seniors are some of the city's greatest assets and they are worth protecting. They are taking applications for the program, which you can find on our website. When you read something or even hear information from friends and family, how do you know if what they're saying is truth? Tonight, in-depth reporter Nick Bradshaw shows us the human cost of misinformation as we celebrate National News Literacy Week. Here at the Dallas Holocaust Museum. And I describe my life like the stock market. <laughs> up and down, up, and everybody left. In plain language, Jewish dwellings are filthy and neglected. University students organized book burnings across Germany, destroying books by Jewish authors. Consequences of Propaganda. Nazi propaganda chief Joseph Goebbels planned to win over those who were still unconvinced. By believing in God and letting him help me sustain my life. Max Cloud, now 94, is a victim of false information. As a child, the Nazis killed Max's entire family. Their names on display as a remembrance. But misinformation is still alive to this day. It's, it's about an election. Wh whoever the American people voted in should be the president, not the person that created fraud. Oh man, a president that should still be, man. You know, President Trump. You know, it was, it was robbed from him. I truly believe that wholeheartedly. Around the corner from the museum, the very spot John F. Kennedy was assassinated. It is almost 1229. In November, thousands of people believed his son, JFK Jr., would appear in Dilly Plaza. Any minute now, the big reveal. Despite dying in a plane crash 22 years ago. The crowd is big, ready to go. JFK Jr. would become vice president to former President Trump. Of course, that never happened. Yes, that's right. Hello. Hello, and he was talking to me, not you. He was talking to you. Where's JFK Jr.? Yeah, you'll see soon enough. She's part of a group called QAnon, which believes the 2020 presidential election was stolen. Whatever political party 
loses, you know, an election or loses the majority of um, federal offices will begin to um, use more conspiracy. And I do believe it will be proven that there was uh, non-radioactive isotopes put on the official ballots and the National Guard counted the official ballots. And this is about taking back our republic. So once it takes hold in a community, um, it's hard to make it go away. There are people who believe conspiracy theories that have existed for 30, 40, 50 years in this country. Public restrooms can often be a hangout for the homosexual. Misinformation is nothing new. In the 50s, police departments sent videos to classrooms warning about, quote, the homosexual man. And it may be too late when you discover he is mentally ill. Once again, there's no truth to that. And for years, the LGBTQ plus community has fought for equal rights. I'm sorry that I spent so many years in the closet. Journalism matters. That's why it's important to spot the difference between flat out lies and true information. To love and be loved by and you serve each other's needs. A part of who you are and how you behave and how you are capable with their help to make this a better world. I'm Nick Bradshaw reporting. Each night this week at 5 and 6, 25 News is highlighting National News Literacy Week, a time to underscore the role of news literacy in America. We'll have stories from how we make our news stories to the dangers of only getting your news off of social media. We'll also have articles posted on our website, kxxv.com, and quizzes for you to test your news literacy skills. All right, let's bring in Matt for another check on our forecast. And today we did see a little bit of rain across the area and we needed it. The latest drought monitor that came out last Thursday had extreme drought. Meridian, Hamilton and Gatesville. And guess where we saw the least amount of rain today? Right here in this area. And then it does get a little bit better as you head southeast to Waco Temple and Colleen. So that's what we saw there as we take a look at the rainfall map. Well, we did see a little bit between a quarter and a half inch from Waco Temple Colleen off toward the east. So a nice little band of rain going through Bell County, Burnett County. County, parts of McLennan and then over into Limestone and Freestone into Leon and Robertson County as well. So we have seen a little bit of rain. Is it going to break the drought? Definitely not. But anything will help as we can start to chip away right now. And again, our wettest months are still in front of us for the year. 25 radar showing that we do have a couple of showers again still across our eastern areas. Corsicana getting a nice little shower right now. And then it looks like it's starting to dry out between Fairfield down towards Centerville. Back toward the west, we do have some showers around Meridian. These will be pushing down into McLennan County. So we may see a shower or two approach Waco in the next hour or so, but it won't last too long. And there will likely be some drizzle and fog later on tonight as well. As we check out temperatures, well, we're hanging out into the 40s and 50s, but visibility is still not too bad right now. I do think these will be coming down later on tonight, especially as we get closer to midnight and beyond, where we could see some visibilities by morning, about a quarter of a mile or so. We'll talk more about that and a cool week ahead coming up. All right, Matt. Inflation, the computer chip shortage, supply chain issues, climate change, and voting rights, they are all big obstacles for President Biden. But as Joe St. George explains, they are not the biggest one he's facing. A job not yet finished. President Biden seeking to jumpstart his stalled agenda in Congress again this week. What's still on the table impacting you? Modest election changes are possible. New COVID relief spending is too. Not to mention funding for the environment and pre-K education. Possible executive orders are possible as well if Congress doesn't act. But the president is facing the realization that he doesn't have all the time in the world to get his ambitions accomplished this year is an election year with polls suggesting Democrats may lose control of at least one chamber of Congress. I don't believe the polls. But while the president may not believe the polling, you can't dismiss the fact that each one of these Democrats is retiring. And while some are doing so to run for a different office, it is a higher than usual number and a sign Democrats may have some tough political fights this year. And it's not just retirements impacting the president. Democrats are facing difficult redistricting fights too. What is redistricting? It's the process of redrawing congressional maps, which impacts who represents your family. It happens every 10 years and is tied to the census. We have lawyers that had, uh, had concerns about what they were doing. 
In Florida, Republican Governor Ron DeSantis is pushing Republicans to draw maps that favor Republicans even more than what was originally proposed. In Kentucky, Democratic Governor Andy Beshear vetoed a redistricting map that heavily favors the GOP, but the state legislature overruled him. In Tennessee, Republicans are advancing plans to make it easier to win near Nashville. The same is true in Kansas, where Republicans are hoping to fare better in races near Kansas City. All of this puts pressure on President Biden to get something done. But getting something done in Washington right now for the White House isn't easy. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Well, things are starting to heat up between the U.S. and Russia. The Biden administration is ordering some Americans to evacuate Ukraine as Russian forces continue to gather at the border there. And new tonight, the U.S. deciding to place 8,500 troops on high alert in case they're needed as part of NATO's response force. As of now, the decision has been made to put these units on higher alert and higher alert only. No decisions have been made to deploy any forces from the United States at this time. The U.S. has said Russian aggression could lead to crippling economic sanctions and re restricting Russian access to certain technologies. Around this time of year, meat prices are usually, usually on their way down. But this year, like a lot of things, prices have been up a lot. Coming up, we'll explain why that is. So meat prices are up substantially at a time of the year when usually they go down. But many ranchers say they're not making any more profit despite rising costs. Dan Grossman has the story. Character is found in grit. And grit? That's found bountifully in Zane Bluebaugh's daily routine. In his arms, Zane carries the weight of feed for his cattle. On his back, he carries the weight of his family's entire legacy. Just trying to make a commitment to move forward and actually grow um, is virtually impossible right now. For six generations, the Blue Balls have raised cattle on their nearly 3,000 acres in Tonkawa, Oklahoma. Each generation has guided the ranch through its hardships and uncertainties, but few have faced the ones Zane is currently facing at the young age of 23. It just makes it more uncertain at every level. It compounds those factors to where it becomes more difficult to predict anything. You want me to take the map for you? If you've gone to the store recently, you know the prices of food and meat. But what you might not know is the people some might assume are benefiting from them are hurting as much, if not more, than the people they're supplying. Yeah, we got the independent farmers and ranchers, we're on razor thin margins. Uh, many of these multi-generational operations are uh, having trouble even staying in business. Across the country, ranchers like Zane are going out of business rapidly. Since 1980, the farmer's share of the retail food dollar has plummeted by 50%, and the processor's share, or the companies that prepare the meat for packaging, has risen by nearly 60%. It has led to record profits for producers and smaller profits for ranchers while passing higher prices down to consumers. Well, I think it's just pure greed because they can. They have that much market power. The system that we have today is broken. Scott Bluebaugh is Zane's dad and the president of the Oklahoma Farmers Union. What he says about market power is true. According to Farming, the top four processing companies control 84% of the beef industry. In 1970, that number was 25%, as tens of thousands of processors have either been bought up or pushed out. It means less competition, which means fewer options for competing prices and fewer chances to keep legacy farms like theirs running. It's a huge uh, burden that we all carry be able to carry on. We have to make lots of sacrifices. To manage, the Blue Boss have cut back on auctions, swapped to smaller processors, and marketed directly to the consumer, hoping the strength of their character can support the weight of their legacy. I'm Dan Grossman. All right, let's go ahead and circle back in with Matt. And we are looking at a week that's going to be pretty cool here across the area. Today was our best shot of rain across the region. I think highs will be in the 50s for the rest of the week. There could be a couple of showers 
by late Thursday into Friday. Right now, it doesn't look like a big deal at all. And then a mild weekend on the way. Looks like some sunshine, temperatures in the 60s. Could we approach 70? Well, it'll be possible by Sunday, so definitely something to look forward to there. Our 25 radar showing that uh, showers are pretty much ending across the area. We did have some pretty good coverage of the rain earlier today. That continues to push off to the east. There is one little band of some wraparound showers here on the backside that will continue down toward the southeast, so it could impact areas from Highway 84 and off toward the northeast around Gatesville, Waco, and then over toward Mejia. I don't think it'll make it too much farther south than that, as it is slowly starting to weaken as it works its way off to the southeast. In fact, there's the center of the upper low right there that is churning its way right over Hillsboro currently. Our extra coat, Eagle Eye and Cove, it's actually cleared out a little bit here as you've seen some drier air work in into the mid levels of the atmosphere and our extra coat, Eagle Eye showing that. So we do have partly cloudy skies, 48 degrees. Winds have gone calm there and it looks like we will see those lighter winds tonight. So with the rain that fell, we may see some fog start to develop as we approach the morning hours. Showers are moving east. You can see most of the rain tonight is going to be over into Louisiana, continuing off into the southeastern part of the U.S. and down into the Gulf of Mexico as well. Much drier as you head back to the west. So that's what we can expect here over the next 48 hours. So your future track showing that we will have some of the clouds around and then we will see a little fog in the morning, maybe an increase in cloud cover as we make our way into Wednesday. So overall, not anticipating anything major here over the next 48 hours. But the biggest thing we'll have to talk about is the potential for some fog as we will be seeing our fog values probably start to come down around midnight, especially from about Waco Temple Colleen down Highway 6, probably into that half mile, maybe quarter mile range, and that'll go right into the morning hours as well. Quarter to half mile visibilities. So you'll probably want to take it easy on those roadways as we make our way into tomorrow. Then as we get to tomorrow afternoon, it'll just clear up like that into the late morning hours, and we will be seeing sunshine by tomorrow afternoon and great visibility here across the area, and hopefully not repeating the process thereafter. So tonight, temperatures, well, they'll make their down to the 30s across our western area. This is where you're seeing a bit of clearing. More clouds from Waco Temple off toward the east. It will keep you into the lower 40s. And again, some fog will be possible in the morning. Then temperatures will be into the 50s tomorrow. So on the cool side, just slightly below normal for this time of year. And looking at your forecast, those temperatures hanging out in the 50s for the rest of the week. There's your slight chance of showers Thursday and Friday. Then some 60s, close to 70 on Sunday, and we will keep it mild in the next week. Maybe a couple showers and thunderstorms by then as well. Our umbrella winner today, hey, on a rainy day, Suzanne Speck. Congratulations to you. Go to kxxv.com to register to win yours. Schedules during the pandemic are anything but normal, but what if your well-being depended on it? Yeah, there are actually gym classes now across the country for people who find themselves in this exact situation. Forrest Sanders has more. Time flies, yes. This is actually us 40-some years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Had a longer hair. We both did. Yeah, it's been a few years, but Nori and Echo Ishii remember these days so well. Yeah. Oh, of course we do. <laughs> when I met her, it looked to me very cute. <laughs> a guy with a car driving impressed me a lot. <laughs> Nori and Echo say building a great life takes work, persistence, focus. No matter what happens, it was four years ago, Nori got a hard diagnosis. Parkinson's. It's a shock. At the beginning, I thought I was unlucky because I have to have this disease. Losing his strength, Nori no longer wanted to even walk in his neighborhood. But then Echo thought... There should be some way to slow down the progression. She was right, but she didn't expect to find that way here. Five, four, three, two, one... We use the elements of boxing to fight back against Parkinson's because everything a professional boxer trains for is the same thing that someone living with Parkinson's disease is struggling with each and every day. They're struggling with power or strength, um, agility. Five, four, five, Colleen Bridges runs Rocksteady Boxing Music City. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
the more diligent they are in fighting back against Parkinson's every day, the slower the progression will ultimately be. Yes, Joe Sargent. Give me two more. Nari's come such a long way since he started training with Colleen, but with COVID and now the surging numbers of the Omicron variant, Nari doesn't feel he can go to a gym to continue the training he needs. Still, nice. this was no time to give up. COVID definitely threw a few punches, but I would say my fighters threw a lot more punches right back at it and even harder. Eight, seven, six, Nari's one five, of the rock steady boxers doing their training from home and this man's commitment. Well, I'll let Colleen tell you. Nari did over 450 hours worth of classes in 2021 alone. Nari didn't know it was that many. Yeah, I'm quite surprised. He works out every day over internet. That made a huge difference past two years. Like building a great life. It's work, persistence, focus, no matter what happens. You can be very successful no matter what comes in your way. One, two, two three, Roxy! Roxy! In Franklin, Tennessee, I'm Forrest Sanders. All right, still come on this Monday, a look at some of the stories we're tracking for 10. Plus another check on your 25 weather forecast. Tonight at 10, here's a look at what we're working on. Where are the COVID-19 pills? Both Merck and Pfizer have effective treatments available in the pill form, but they are awfully hard to come by. We're taking a look at that. And both Baylor men's and women's basketball teams getting ready for another week of Big 12 conference play. Jack Allen will have a preview of that. And before we go, let's get a final check on weather with Matt. And we'll have the potential for a little bit of fog tonight, but I do think we will start to clear out as we move into Tuesday afternoon. Highs will be into the mid-50s, and it's going to be kind of a cool week out there. Lows around freezing, highs into the 50s. That's actually pretty normal for this time of year. Maybe a slight chance of rain by the end of the week, and then we get a little treat this weekend with some sunshine and warming temperatures. All right, we are back tonight at 10 and any time on our 25 News mobile app. Until then, thanks for being with us. We'll see you at 10.